Well, hey everybody, thank you for once again checking in and welcome to another episode. And today I'm going to talk to you about some of the more controversial of our lovely old vintage lenses, those made during what I'm going to call the radiation years or the golden years of radioactivity. Yes, radioactive lenses. Now there are quite a few of them. There are quite a few in number. There are a minority of vintage lenses. By no means all vintage lenses are radioactive. Most are not. But there is a significant minority that are. And they come from all of the major manufacturers and some of the third party ones too. I use them. I don't worry too much about them. I guess the big question is, are they safe? And of course, I've wondered that. I don't worry too much about them. They were used back in the day. They've been used ever since. And, you know, I continue to use them. And so do many photographers. Um, cautiously, of course, there are rules that you need to follow and silly things that you shouldn't do. But I do generally, by and large, use them without too much worrying lenses like this Minolta Rockor 50mm or 58mm 1.4 PF. This is a, a radioactive lens. You must decide for yourself, of course, but based on my research, I think that used with reasonable caution, they should be pretty much okay. So, why would you put radioactive thorium and other radioactive elements into photographic lenses? Thorium in particular is pretty radioactive and as I understand it, some lenses had by weight 30% of thorium. So th some of these lenses are pretty hot. Most are not that hot, but one or two are. Why was it used well? They just give wonderful colours. Um, I mean, there is some technical stuff. Let's have a look what I've got for the technical stuff. Thorium oxide is the element that was used, the oxide of thorium. And it gives, here's the technical stuff. It gives high refractivity and low dispersion and it allows lens designers to minimize chromatic aberration and use lenses of lower cur curvature, which are actually, it says here, were less expensive to produce. So it was a way of making glass that, that had really good optical properties, but keeping manufacturing costs down. And you can understand why manufacturers would do that and this is a time when you know the 40s to the 70s what you might call the golden years of radioactivity this is a time when the dangers seem to have not been entirely understood um, radioactivity is very very dangerous but it wasn't really seen as that at the time and it I, I think it was considered that there was a sort of a low safe dose that that you that you could have and and still be okay um it was seen as something of a miracle uh during that time it gave cheap power of a very futuristic saw it was used in medicine it was used on the watch uh, faces of old watches the hands would have a little bit of uranium painted on them I think it was uranium anyway do correct me if I'm wrong so that it would glow in the dark that was radioactive now as it happens I've only just discovered I do have quite a few radioactive lenses some of which I just didn't know to be radioactive at all until I started doing a little bit of research for this episode I knew that the Minolta uh, was radioactive, the Rock or PF, the 55 1.4, and quite a few of the earlier Minolta's like this one are radioactive. The only way you'll really know whether a lens is radioactive is to check it yourself with a Geiger counter. 
we're looking at very old lenses here. You know, the youngest of them is 40 years old now, so many of the designers will be quite elderly. Some of them may sadly no longer be with us. So who knows what happened in those days? Who knows what went into what lens? The only real way you can test them is with a Geiger counter yourself. So you can't really take anyone's word for it because, you know, we don't know there can be cases of Chinese whispers and the internet can be a minefield of good information but also misinformation. There are lists, there are fairly reliable lists, which I will put links to. So I've got them in Alta. I did discover also that two of my favourite lenses are radioactive. The Konica Hexanon 50mm 1.4 is apparently radioactive. That's a surprise because this is a later lens. The Hexanon 57mm 1.4 that came just before it is also radioactive and I didn't know that. These lenses both give beautiful, beautiful colours, really quite stunning colours and that's why thorium was added. It gives colours what does it give them? It gives them glow. It gives them just an incredible quality that, that's unlike colours from any other lens. Later lenses did become very nice. The non-thoriated lenses, of course. The later non-thoriated lenses, many of them are very, very beautiful. But none of them have quite the same character in their colours as the thoriated lenses. Did. They really were quite stunning and for me that's that's why I use them these days. I do use them um, and I don't think they present any particular risk from the research that I've done. You must make your own decision of course. There was, uh, there was a, a report from, I think it was a government body in Switzerland who said that if you use one of these lenses every day, day in, day out, for a year, the dose of radiation you would get is equal to 0.17% of your safe uh, annual dose. So that is encouraging. Don't forget there's radiation in the environment also. If you take a ride on an aircraft, you'll get a dose of radiation. Apparently, this is all apparently because I'm not an expert, but apparently even if you eat a banana, you'll get a dose of radiation. Those are uh, low level radioactivity in bananas. Um, various parts of the world can have radiation in the bedrock. I know quite a lot of places in Scotland have radiation in the granite and have higher background radiation than other parts of the world. So radiation is a thing that we live with. Radioactivity, you know, you're never free of radioactivity. You're never clear from it. So the question is, do these lenses present an unsafe risk of radioactivity? And in my thinking, with occasional use, I don't think they do. Um, Right, radioactive decay. What comes out of these lenses apparently is alpha particles. And alpha particles, again according to what I've read, I'm not an expert, but alpha particles are reasonably easy to stop so that they can be stopped with a filter like I've got on here or a rear cap like I've got on here. So certainly using one on a camera you're not going to get too much alpha particles, uh, so I'm informed. Of course, there are things that you should never do with these lenses. Never, ever hold them to sensitive parts of the body, such as the eye, for example. So what you would never do is take one of these lenses, hold it to your eye and take a jolly old look through one because the eye is delicate, the cornea, the lens, the retina, all very, very delicate parts. And there are other delicate parts of the body as well, I'm sure. I don't need to tell you where they are, uh, that you shouldn't hold these lenses anywhere near. And in fact, don't hold them near the body is a general, a good general rule 
of thumb. But other than that, I think they should be pretty safe. Storage, right. Store these lenses. Don't store these lenses in your general living area near to where people regularly go and spend time. I keep mine in my camera cabinet. That's away from the general living area, any sleeping areas. So just keep them well away from where you, uh, you know, spend a lot of time. And that is a good uh, safety factor. You might also want to keep them in a metal box, um, ideally a lead box. You know, the heavier the metal, the better. Nothing will get through lead. None of this stuff will get through lead. Uh, but I think a, a metal, say a biscuit tin or something like that would do probably an equally good job. Right, what other lenses are radioactive? Well, I'll tell you. Ah, uh, what? Where are we? Where? Uh, okay, Carl Zeiss Jena lenses often are radioactive. The early version of the Tessar is certainly radioactive. This is a later version, which may be radioactive. I don't know, but the later version certainly is the Zebra one. The Pancola, one of my favorite lenses, might even be my favorite vintage lens. The earlier Zebra version was radioactive. It was full of thorium. Well, I say full of thorium. It had thorium in it. I don't know to what extent that was a radioactive lens. The later one is not. And it just shows that by little adjustments, I don't know what they did, but this lens is a very, very beautiful lens. It's probably the nicest vintage 51.8 I've ever shot. It might even be the nicest vintage lens I've ever shot. It's absolutely beautiful. It's got stunning colours. It's very, very sharp. So whatever the engineers did at Carl Zeiss Jena, it shows that you can produce a non-thoriated, a non-radioactive lens that's equally as good as the original. It doesn't have quite the same signature, visual signature, but it is equally as good. So you don't have to have thorium in lenses. But my goodness, it certainly helps. Another thing I don't think you should do with these lenses is ever dismantle them. And there are a couple of reasons for that. These are old lenses. If they've ever been dropped, then there's a chance that some of the glass elements may have just uh, been damaged at the edge. There might be a little bit of broken glass, a little bit of glass powder in there. That's thoriated glass. You don't want to open the lens in case you ingest that glass. Um, more of a danger, I think, this is a radioactive lens and it's got dust in it. Even if there's never been a drop, it's still got dust in it. And that dust has been sitting next to radiation, absorbing radioactivity and becoming radioactive itself in that time. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's how it works. Anything in contact with anything with radioactivity is going to eventually become or possibly become radioactive itself. That dust, if you open the lens, you, you will ingest it. It will get into the area where you live and work and eat and sleep and all the rest of it. So that is not a good thing. You do not ever want to ingest anything that's been uh, exposed to radioactivity or, or, or that is radioactive with lanthanum in it. That's going to cause real big problems. So that is a big no-no. In my opinion, that is a big no-no for radioactive lenses. Don't ever dismantle them and certainly, certainly don't ever ever be tempted to grind them. If you've got a scratched one, leave it scratched. Don't grind it because if you grind it, obviously you're pulling little bits of glass off that surface. That's radioactive glass. Eventually it's going to get into the environment and you will ingest it and unfortunate things may result. Never ever grind radioactive lenses. And I did do a little video 
on grinding a lens my Flector Gon 20mm f4 which I ground a little while back now I did make very very sure that that wasn't radioactive before I ground it but I forgot in that video to say never grind radioactive lenses so I rushed out a quick video afterwards just to remind everybody don't grind radioactive lenses safety first folks other lenses that were radioactive well a lot of the pentax lenses were radioactive especially the takamars and certainly the 51.4 is i as i understand it is very radioactive even the 55 1.8 and f2 are radioactive it's the same lens it's a radioactive lens one of my favorites i've just discovered it's radioactive a lot of the kodak lenses were radioactive from the 40s through to the 60s and possibly beyond that they were quite hot lenses as i understand it um, which others some leica lenses were radioactive the canon fl lenses were radioactive and also the Olympus Zuiko silver nose were radioactive. This is a black nose 55 mil 1.2. I don't think this is radioactive, but I'm told that the earlier silver nose was radioactive. Also the 50 mil F1.4 Zuiko was radioactive. I've got one of those on somewhere on RM2. Uh, actually this is the black nose version but the silver nose is radioactive the early silver nose version of the 1.4 is radioactive uh, so that's something to be careful of quite a few actually of the zuiko lenses were radioactive the canon fl lenses certainly were radioactive i think also the canon dream lens the f1.250 is radioactive thankfully none of the canon fd uh, lenses are so luckily this lovely 51.4 that's sitting on my t70 which i've still not finished the film in actually none of the fd lenses are radioactive so that is nice to know so eventually thorium was taken out of these lenses for various reasons for workers health the people who actually made and ground the lenses their health was obviously a consideration public concern also public concern about radioactivity increased and rose to a height during the late 60s and the 70s where we had things like cnd and ban the bomb and people were worried about nuclear power and still are in fact so eventually for various reasons like that and a dose of good old common sense lenses were no longer thoriated and manufacturers found other ways to bring us optical delights and beautiful lenses lanthanum as i've said like in this Indostar 61 lanthanum is safe so absolutely no problems with lanthanum i have read and this is possibly a concern as these thoriated lenses get older that there is a chain of radioactive decay so thorium starts out as thorium and eventually i don't know the how long it takes it might be thousands of years i don't know well however long it takes it in, ends up as lead so it goes from thorium to lead but during those changes or various stages on that journey so i've read different particles can be emitted now when the lenses were new thorium was new only alpha particles are emitted and they are again apparently according to what i've read easily stopped by things like a filter or a lens cap even a sheet of paper is said to stop alpha particles as the decay progresses i've read that what can happen is that gamma particles and beta particles can be released and they are very very high energy radioactive 
particles and they can be dangerous. I don't know if this happens, but it is a consideration possibly as the lenses age. I'm just letting you know, putting it out there so you're aware of it too. Again, you must make up your own mind. My own opinion is that used with caution, these lenses are safe enough. So I don't let it trouble me too much, but again, you must decide for yourself. So I will, with appropriate caution, continue to use these beautiful old lenses, thorium or no thorium. I won't put them to my eye, I won't put them to any sensitive parts of the body, and I'll store them carefully. And I think, given those precautions, they should be pretty safe. So there we are, that's the story of radioactive lenses and how thorium was added to lenses in the golden years of radioactivity. So I think that's probably it from me for today. Many, many thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Many thanks to subscribers for your support. And if you've enjoyed the episode, why not chuck us a sub? That would be appreciated. Many thanks to patrons for your support. And if you like what this channel's doing, if you think, yes, this old hippie isn't doing too bad a job of keeping this old gear alive, thoriated or not, then why not consider becoming a patron over at www.patreon.com forward slash xenography. So that's it from me for now. If you're not doing anything too irksome, involving or bothersome next week at the same time, please do tune in and join me for another spot of xenography. Cheerio all.